thank you very much. Those are individual trades and trade setups, uh, which uh, we are getting to you more coming up in a bit. Now, the Defense Acquisition Council has cleared the acquisition proposals worth of over 84,000 crore rupees with the with the uh, with procurement worth 82,000 crores to be completed through uh, local sources, uh, indigenous sources. Uh, Acquisitions include the light, light tanks, naval anti-ship missiles, and offshore patrol vehicles. Amit Dikshit is analyst at ICS Securities. He's joining us now. I mean, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Just put in context this, uh, uh, you know, the, the clearance coming in from the government. Uh, how much of this number is known, uh, factored in into estimates for uh, listed companies? What is new? Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. So, uh, if you look at the numbers, first of all, 84,300 crores, and it is spread across various services, Navy, Air Force, as well as Indian Army, and Coast Guard as well. Uh, now, if you look at the genesis of this, I think it has to do with the uh, skirmishes on the northeastern border, and uh, uh, therefore, uh, this uh, has been uh, done in part. That has That is the driving factor. And uh, if you look at the uh, look at the individual, you know, uh, the category wise, while the detailed breakup is not available, and also the individual contract value at this stage is not available, as well as the timelines we don't have. But if you look at the individual items, so I believe that the uh, that it is uh, the, the naval anti ship missiles, for instance, and uh, next generation offshore petrol vessels for Coast Guard. I think these were going around for a while. Uh, but uh, there are certain things like light tanks, for instance. Uh, now, in, in defense, what happens that unless and until you get, uh, there, there, there is always, you know, uh, an, uh, an anticipation of uh, certain orders flowing through. But unless and until you have this acceptance of necessity, things uh, uh, really don't move. So uh, once we have this, so I believe people will start building these in their estimates. And particularly from an order book perspective, I think these will start gradually getting built in. However, uh, to answer your question, I think next generation offshore petrol vessels was definitely expected. Uh, similarly, uh, these uh, anti-ship missiles were expected and light tanks were expected, but nothing concrete was uh, announced earlier. So clearly it comes as a positive for the companies that are engaged in these. Okay, so let's talk about the stocks then because eventually that's what matters. Amit, what are your top stocks uh, from the defence space that you like where there is both growth potential and there's also valuation headroom because many of these stocks have been huge gainers in 2022? Yeah, Sonia, so if you look at it from the uh, from the items that we have, I believe BDL, Bharat Dynamics, certainly stands uh, to gain because of the uh, focus on missile system. Then if you talk about the high endurance, uh, uh, you know, uh, this one, your long range guided bombs and uh, the missile integration. So I believe Solar, Solar Industries is uh, one company that can gain. Uh, the next generation offshore petrol vessels were in line, I mean, were in talk by GRSE for quite some time. Uh, and if you uh, look at the other, so, I mean, we uh, don't cover some of these talks directly, some of the other analysts cover. Uh, for instance, uh, Bharat Forge, direct beneficiary of your uh, infantry combat vehicles, light tanks, LNT would benefit. So these are the stocks that would largely benefit. And of course, you know, from the surveillance system, the companies that are engaged in retard like BEL uh, would benefit. So these are the companies that would be direct beneficiaries. Of course, I mean, as I would add the disclaimer that we would wait for the details, uh, you know, before taking a really final, final call on the stuff. You know, pull up names like, uh, now I'm digressing a little bit, but uh, uh, intradays for Cochin Shipyard completely smashed yesterday, 10% cut. Uh, let's have Garden Reach Shipbuilders. Again, uh, you know, we saw a very large cut there. Uh, there you go. And uh, do you track these ones, Amit? Any thoughts? Uh, sorry, which one? Uh, Garden uh, Reach, no. Cochin, Mazgaon, yeah, yeah. Dock, the shipbuilders. So, so as I said, you know, the, in case of shipbuilders, uh, we have a, a cell rating on shipbuilders. We don't cover Cochin shipyard, so uh, we cover Mazgaon, we cover Garden Reach. So, uh, the cell rating is driven by the fact that you know we don't we see the peak uh, cash flow in FY25, and beyond that, we don't have a great visibility on the execution part. 
So, uh, uh, and if you look at from a stock perspective, these orders, uh, I mean, I look uh, I look at GRSC, that is Garden Reach, being the primary beneficiary. Madgaon, I don't think, would benefit a lot from this. Uh, and so, we'll be coaching Shipyard, but definitely GRSC could see some respite today. Okay, thanks a lot, Amit, for stopping by and speaking to us. That's on the defence sector. Let's take a quick break. On the other side, we'll have the pre-opening rates. We will talk about more stocks, so don't go anywhere. Vishal Manchanda of Systematics Group will talk about all the big pharma names on the back of rising COVID concerns and how you should approach them. Do stay tuned in.